Hi everyone. Today we are going to do a video on Blazor Server Cookie Authentication. Okay, it is a part one video of this series. So in this series, what we are going to do, we are going to do Blazor Server Authentication with normal .NET Cookie. Okay, so what what is our target in this video? Are like creating user authentication tables. Okay, creating a Blazor server application, installing NT framework core, and configuring the TB context. So, our authentication tables look like this like user, user will contain user information, and roles, roles will contain like user is admin or super admin or like that information, roles table will hold. And there is a mapping table between the user and the roles, like user roles, where we can add multiple roles for any user. Okay, those can be mapped with user ID and role ID. Okay, this should be the ideal structure of our authentication table. So here is the script for the user table. So you can run this command into your SQL Server database. Okay, and here is the script for roles table. And here is the script for user roles table. Okay, now let's jump into creating a Blazor server the application. So here is my CLI command for creating the Blazor application. So let's run the command. So project has been successfully created. Let's open my project in Visual Studio Code Editor. So here is our project and target framework is .NET 6.0. Okay, now let's install. NT framework core dependent NuGet packages. So the first package that we have to install is Microsoft.NT framework core. So Visual Studio users copy from the package manager. I will copy from the .NET CLI. Install it. And next package that we are going to install is that Microsoft.NT framework core SQL server. Copy the command, install it. And now we have to create the entities the, that represent our table classes. So now we are going to create three classes. So those three classes represents our three tables. So inside of the data folder, let's add a, another folder like entities. Inside of it, first let's create the class like users. So here is the users class that represents our users table. Okay, so let's add the properties of this class that represent the columns of the users table. So finally, our users class look like this where we have properties like first name, last name, email, and password hash, okay? Now let's create a, another table class that is roles. Okay, this is our roles class that is equivalent to the roles table. Now let's add properties into it. So finally, our roles class looks like this, where it contains properties like simply ID and the name of the role. Okay, now let's create the class that represents the mapping table that is user roles. So this is our user roles class that represents user roles table. So let's add properties into it. Okay, finally, our user roles class look like this. Now, to manage all these table classes, we need to create a contest class that is called database contest class. So, database cl contest class is equivalent to the database. So, now in the data folder, let's directly create a class like my cookie auth context. So the name of the 
uh, DB context class is similar to the name of the database. That is the convention, but you can give any name. But convention is database name should be given as context class name. Okay, now this is our context class. Actually, currently it is a normal plain C sharp class. To make it DB context class, we must inherit DB context that loads from the Microsoft.nt framework core. Okay, now into the con constructor, let's pass the DB context options. So these are options we are injecting into the constructor of nothing but like connection string, like some timeout configurations, all those will come under DB context option. Okay. Now finally, let's register all our table classes into it. So all the table classes must be registered as a properties into the DB context. Okay, and this property name must match with our table names. Okay, now in the app settings dot development dot JSON file, let's add our database connection string. So to do that, we have a default property like connection string. Inside of it, let's add our own property. Okay, here you can add your database con connection string. Okay, after adding database connection string, let's register our database context into the program.cs file. Okay. Okay, here we have to specify few options like option start use sql server okay that loads from nt framework and here we have to pass our connection string to do that we can have builder dot configurations dot get connection string okay inside of it let's paste our connection string property name Okay, that's it about configuring the DB context for our user authentication tables. So in this video, we have created authentication tables, created our Blazor WebAssembly application and installed NT framework and configured the database context. So in the part two of the video series, we are going to implement the user reg registration logic. Okay. I hope this video has delivered some useful information to you all. So if you like my video, please support me by subscribing to my channel. Soon we are going to meet with new videos. Until then, signing off.